Hi, I'm Ryan with Iron Planet Hobbies. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Digikai's DR5000 step by step with no steps skipped. Okay, to get started, the first thing you're going to need to do is download and install the PC app. And you want to do this before you make any connections. So we're going to click on this and go ahead and get this downloaded. I will try to drop a link in the description below that will send you straight to this. Otherwise, it's at the bottom of the digikize.com website. And so we have now gone ahead and downloaded that. So we will click right down here. I'm using Google Chrome. Uh, other browsers, browsers may have a different way of doing that. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this up and we will get this running here. If you get a security uh, pop-up box, go ahead and click yes to go past it. And now we will go ahead and install the PC app here on the computer. And we'll just click through next, next, install. And this will go ahead and install the PC app and you've got to have this done before you plug in anything. So we'll click finish. It pops up a notepad here that shows some of the updates, uh, version firmware, things like that. So we can go ahead and close that out and we can minimize that. And then right here, you can see this has been added to the desktop. And so we're gonna go ahead and open it right now. And this comes up in demo mode because we do not have the DR5000 uh, plugged into the computer just yet. So um, even if you don't have the command station yet, you can go ahead and download this app and you can click through all the different tabs and kind of get an idea, get a feel for what's there and how things work. And so you can do all that in the demo version. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this off here and we're going to go ahead and plug our DR5000 in and we're going to reopen the app. Okay, now I've got the app reopened and you can see right here, it no longer says demo. It has the serial number of the DR5000. <clears throat> and uh, just to go over and hit the highlights here on the things that you will need to look at to get it running is first thing we are going to do is we will look at the control tab and on the control tab you've got a couple things here uh, one this is the drive button if you can want to run a throttle straight from the pc you can do that right here if you want to throw turnouts uh, you can do that right here just change your turnout number click one of the buttons these will update to the number that you have put in up here and We'll go over here and look at the track status. Uh, this just shows the temperature inside the DR5000 and the H bridge is the booster that is inside. And then we'll come up to the programming track. Uh, you can program on your programming track or program on the main address, CV numbers. Uh, this is a real nice feature. Test drive, if you are on the programming track, you can go ahead and run a loco. All your functions are right here. And on the settings, uh, you can change this to match your decoder. If you have a very power-hungry decoder with the sounds and lights, you can start increasing the output. And then you can also change this so this can go all the way up to 100 and this will go up to 800 or you can lower it just depending on your decoder just play around with those settings a little bit and then you will find something that matches that decoder all right the track output tab um, if you are not using railcom you will want to uncheck that box right there and then of course save it right down here with the green tick uh, if you are using railcom then you will of course want that checked and one more thing here on the S88 bus. If you are not using any S88 feedback devices, you will want to turn that to zero and then checkbox that right there. On the USB tab, this is important. You can see here this command station has 1.5.1. The software version is 1.52. So we need to update this. So we will go ahead and click the update button. It'll ask you if you want to click yes. The update process will begin it doesn't take very long and it's already says it's done 
So we can go ahead and close that out. Now, before you click on either this tab or this tab, there is some things you need to do. Uh, if you click on these ahead of time, you will get a uh, error notification sound from Windows uh, because it cannot make the connection. So what you'll need to do is uh, you need to either connect the LAN port right here on the DR5000 to your router or point the Wi-Fi from your PC to the DR5000. We have to make a connection there before these tabs will function and so I will show you how to do that. So to make the connection via Wi-Fi, I'm using a laptop here, so we're just gonna click on the internet section down here and right here where it says DR5000, we're gonna click on that and go ahead and click connect. And your password for that by default is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so uh, when that comes up, it will have the little caution sign down here on the Wi-Fi because there is no internet access coming from the DR5000. And so once that gets uh, populated there, it does take a few minutes or maybe up to a minute to uh, fill in the information for these uh, two tabs here. It doesn't come on just instantly, but maybe maybe 30 seconds or so. So once that connection is made, then you can go ahead and open the tab. And now you can see all of these items are no longer grayed out. And that's on the LAN tab. And this is the Wi-Fi tab. And you can see right here where my laptop is now connected uh, to the internal router inside the DR5000. And for most applications, you can leave all of these defaults as they are. Uh, one thing I'll mention here on the protocol, on the LAN tab, this one does get changed just uh, depending on what you are wanting to use. If you're using the Roco Z21 Wi-Fi throttles, you will want to change this one right here. And then of course, with any changes, make sure you click the green circle checkbox down here at the bottom. If you are running JMRI wirelessly, you will want to use the local net over TCP right here. And otherwise, if you're not using any of those, you can just leave it on the default and you will be just fine. So now that you have all of that in place, uh, you can come up here and go ahead and uh, go through some of these other tabs and uh, play around with some of those settings. Uh, you can open up a throttle and start to drive a train. In fact, you can open up more than one uh, window and you could drive multiple trains if you so choose. So that should be enough information to get you up and going, uh, be able to run trains. And again, don't uh, be afraid to check out some of these other tabs and settings. Uh, I won't go through every single one of those because those are just going to be for your own unique setup. And we will move on with some other videos and some of those other options uh, as we get into those will be covered. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.